Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode fifty two for Wednesday, July first, two thousand fifteen. The cloud. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out the Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, you get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash arena. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Last week on this show, I showed off a few apps that allow you to transfer files using a local wireless network. And today, I thought I'd change things up and spend a little time looking at neat ways that you can put your cloud storage accounts to good use. Now, over the years, personally, I've accumulated free storage at a number of cloud storage services. Managing those can be kind of confusing because there's so many. But free space is free space. And because it's such a bear to manage, often they just kind of sit there empty and unused and sad. One great way to manage them is an app that I actually reviewed on episode eight of this show called Unclouded. So definitely check out that review if you haven't seen it already. It fits today's theme perfectly. But what I have done, uh, I've discovered three more apps that allow you to do cool things with cloud storage. So let's take a look at this week's roundup. First up, when it comes to cloud storage, we're all used to the many ways that the apps for those services sync files to and from the cloud, or maybe we aren't. It can kind of be confusing, especially when you have a ton of cloud storage accounts sprawled out across the web. On the desktop, it's easy to set a folder to be automatically synced to the cloud. On mobile, that seems to be a bit less straightforward. FolderSync does this for you across a wide range of cloud storage services. From home, I'll tap Create New Sync, and I'll name it. Then I can set up or pick a cloud account. This should give you a sense of the kind of support you get within FolderSync. The usual ones are here, of course, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, OneDrive, the recently added Amazon Cloud Drive, and then there's a gazillion others that you may or may not have heard of. Additionally, there's also support for FTP, FTPS, SFTP, WebDAV, and Windows Share accounts. So then, I'll set up an account, and I'll keep it easy by setting up my Google Drive account to sync to. I authenticate, and I save, and now it's added to my list of accounts. I'll go ahead and set that account and hit next. And here's the power of folder sync. I can set up my automatic sync to go in one direction to a local or remote folder, or I can set it up to sync in both directions, kind of like Dropbox. I'll pick the remote and the local folder to sync between, and I can set up a schedule for that sync process. Don't set it up to be too frequent so you can save your battery. I'll save it, and now anything that appears in my local folder will sync to my remote folder and vice versa. Tapping into folder pairs, I can access that sync and drill down even further on things like instant sync, when to overwrite files, what connections to be used, notification settings, and advanced options like only syncing while charging, which I kind of recommend. There's also a file manager for your local files, but folder sync's power lies in its flexible and exhaustive cloud sharing capabilities. Check out the light version to give it a spin, and then purchase the fully featured version for $2.87 in the Play Store. Next, do you keep music files in your cloud lockers? Considering the amount of free space you can score online, it's actually a great place to keep those music files, but you might need a player that makes the process of playback seamless. The Double Twist team, responsible for the extremely popular Double Twist music player app, just released Cloud Player last week, and it's all about taking their music player know-how and applying it to music you have lying around in your cloud storage accounts. Cloud Player has support for Google Drive, Dropbox, and Microsoft OneDrive at the moment. You can set all three accounts up inside the app, 
In doing so, we'll then scan those accounts for any music files you have stored there. And what you get is a combined library that seamlessly merges all of those songs across those three accounts into one main library of music. Any music stored on your device is also integrated into the app, but you'd never know that it was pulling from multiple sources because it's all merged together perfectly. As you can see, cover art is also imported into the UI, and Cloud Player is even analyzing the cover art and pulling out dominant colors for painting the artist and title information with. Kind of neat. In the album's view, the floating action button fires off a random playlist of all artists currently synced. Or you can tap into any artist and then play the album start to finish or choose a song, play song by song, that sort of stuff. Songs stored on cloud accounts can be easily cached to your device for offline listening. You just hit this button. The sidebar has filters for artists, songs, genres, and composers, if it's all embedded in the ID tags, as well as a playlist feature so you can create those playlists on the fly. Cloud Player is a great way to get the most out of your many storage accounts. If you have storage just wasting away, put it to some use as your personal music locker. Cloud Player is free right now in the Play Store. And finally, what about adding social elements? to your cloud accounts. On episode 212 of All About Android, Ron Richards showed off file chat as a way to do just that. It launched just last month, so it's still relatively new to the Play Store, but it allows you to chat with collaborators of files stored on either Dropbox or Google Drive. You will first need to head on over to filechat.com to create an account and connect Drive and Dropbox to file chat. Then you'll create a new file chat and select which service it's actually tied to and which directory or file to create that chat around. The web interface is also where you'll add collaborators so you can chat with them. Now, once you've done all that, you can access those file chats on your mobile device inside the app. It's kind of a bummer that all that setup can't be done from inside the app, but it's early days for the service. I have to imagine that's coming down the pipeline at some point. Now, inside the app, you have access to the files and contents inside those folders that you selected. Any file inside a shared folder can be liked and commented on in a chat stream, giving you very useful collaboration tools. If you want to add new files to an existing file chat, you can do that with this upload button. Uploads include taking a picture, you can pick a photo from your gallery, you can attach a music file, and just general documents. Files added to the file chat appear in the chat stream for other collaborators to see and respond to. It's a great start and a unique way to put your cloud storage to work in more useful and social ways. Check out File Chat for free in the Play Store. All right, I hope I've given you some ammo for putting your unused cloud storage to some good use, but I'm sure... You have others that I've missed. You always seem to. Send me those suggestions to arena at twit.tv, and I'll hold on to them for a future episode. Thank you. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Braintree. Developers, listen up. Code for easy online payments is what Braintree is all about. If you're building a mobile app, you're searching uh, for a simple payment solution, you want to check out Braintree. The Braintree V.0 SDK makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types. Start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more. There's Android Pay uh, coming soon as well, all with a single integration. Simple, secure payments. That's code you can integrate in minutes. Now, developers, we got you covered here. Don't worry about taking days to integrate your payments. With Braintree, it's done in minutes. Don't have time? You can give them a call, and they'll even handle integration for you and actually walk you through it. Braintree code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients. SDKs are in seven languages. That's .NET, Node.js, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, and it's elegant code, clearly documented. It's 10 lines of in-app code. Braintree gives you an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one simple integration. Quick, knowledgeable developer support if you run into any issues, you have any questions, and uh, they just make it easy for you. Start accepting Apple Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and whatever happens to be next, all with this simple, single integration. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, one small snippet of code, and you're all set up in less than 10 minutes. To learn more, and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free 
All you got to do is go to braintreepayments.com slash arena. We thank Braintree for their continued support of this show. All right, up next, an app I've been meaning to showcase on the show for some time now, and thanks to a big update yesterday, I think it was, I have reason to. Let's take a look. This week's big app isn't necessarily new. In fact, it's been a staple on my phone for, I don't know, maybe a couple of years now, but it's one of those apps that is among the first that I install when I'm setting up a new device. And with a huge update this week, it deserves the spotlight. Push Bullet aims to seamlessly pass content and notifications between your devices. This is different from Push Bullet's new app, Portal, that I showed off last week, in that this file transfer is done over the internet, not limited to a local Wi Fi network. So, what is Push Bullet really good at? First, Push Bullet allows you to push a file directly to any device you own that's also running the app. This even works to and from your desktop computer. All of those file transfers are logged in this Me tab inside Push Bullet's new interface. Not only that, notifications can be synced across devices. This means that while I'm at work, any notifications that appear on my device sync to my desktop, the environment that I'm using at that moment. From there, I can act on those notifications without ever picking up my phone. I can read and reply to a text message when it comes in or maybe see the moment a new email hits my inbox and reply directly from that notification. A new feature in Push Bullet is the inclusion of chat functionality between friends using the app. You just search their email address to get started and then you can start a conversation in which you can transfer files and pictures as well as, you know, friendly words. And something I've really enjoyed is channels which you can follow to receive push notifications when those channels update. For example, I'm following If This Then That, which, when given a Craigslist search link, notifies me the second an item appears in a particular section of Craigslist. It's great for snagging an awesome deal before anyone else. I get it right away. Push Bullet continues to find ways to make data sharing between devices super useful, and it almost works so well in the background that you forget it's even there. Find Push Bullet for free in the Play Store. Push Bullet's great for a number of reasons. One, it's totally cross-platform. You can get it all over the place. And, uh, you know, the notification sync. That's one thing that Push Bullet does that I didn't really go into much, uh, syncing notifications across devices in a way that allows you to dismiss a notification on one device and then have it disappear on another device too. In my personal experience, it works, though it's not perfect, and that's kind of understandable. The developers of Push Bullet did highlight that option in red in the settings, labeling it the, quote, highway to the danger zone. Uh, nice reference. Uh, Push Bullet essentially creates its own notification around any notifications that come through so that when you dismiss it, Push Bullet can then dismiss it on the other devices. And in my experience, it's a little messy in action, but there are plenty of people out there that love the feature, so you should check it out for yourself. Google has actually teased notification sync in the past also. We just haven't seen a lot of it in practice. Something like this, I would guess, would probably be much better done at the system level. Let's hope we see that eventually and, you know, totally supported. It's not to take anything away from Push Bullet, though. It's awesome. And I think it's indicative of what makes Android a truly original and liberating platform for developers and users. Uh, I think you'll agree. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can always post those to the subreddit that I check uh, very regularly at androidapparena.reddit.com. You can share those with me and the rest of the world there. Everyone sees it. The show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv slash live. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will always appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page, the new show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.